I V M. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. And today we have a very special guest in the studio. She is the undoubted queen of baking in India. She started her company at the age of twenty-three, Low Fifteen Patisserie, and for nine and a half years, it's grown like crazy. I'm of course talking about Pooja Tingra. Welcome, Pooja. Hi. So happy to finally be here. Thank you. So on the podcast, a lot of people have been writing in saying that they want to understand what are entrepreneurial habits. All right, and I thought you were the best person because <laughs> you started off at such an early age. Very bad habits. <laughs> very very bad habits. <laughs> very bad habits. <laughs> and what happened? How did they? What are the habits that you felt were very bad, and how did that change over a period of time? Um, okay, so entrepreneurial habits. So basically, when you are starting your own business, you don't have a life. Hmm. So you are just, you know, an everyday something new is thrown at you that you could never imagine. So you have to be very agile, and you have to keep changing things, and and you know, adjusting life, adjusting for the life that's going to appear because you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. So for the first three years of Low Fifteen, I. Led a very very terrible life. Like I worked maybe sixteen hours. A minimum day was fifteen sixteen hours. Okay. So I didn't have time to work. And and I've been someone who used to be very physically active. Used to work out a lot. Mm-hmm. First thing that went out of the window was I had no physical energy to do anything other than work because I was in the kitchen all day. Correct. And it's physically demanding. You're standing exactly constantly. exactly. Yeah. So it was. I was in the kitchen all day. I was. Working on so many different dessert menus that I was tasting things all day that I didn't feel like eating lunch. Mm. I didn't feel like eating dinner because you're not really eating and you're not really full, but you're somewhat, you know, you know that you've tasted something. So the only thing I was eating through the day was sugar. Correct. So that's you know, so not working out, uh, not eating right. Plus, I was just, I think I was so, ex- I just felt. I, I still remember this one day mm-hmm. so clearly in the first year. It was around Diwali, which was our busiest time. Right. And the kitchen was in two floors, and I remember being so tired that I even to climb that for that one floor, I I is that moment in my head that's etched that was like, wow, I can't believe that this is so difficult to do. When you know, I was like, maybe I need to change things around and kind of figure out how life should be. Was that a turning point? Was was that a pivotal it, moment? It the the turning point was actually in New York. Three years after that, okay, when I was um, similar situation, I was visiting a friend, right, and I, <laughs> she lived in like you know this typical uh, New York apartment, fifth floor, mm-hmm. and no elevator, right, mm-hmm. and and just going up and down those floors every day felt like a task, correct, and I was like I cannot be a twenty six year old who finds it difficult to climb stairs, yes. So I came back from that trip and said something needs to change, right? Mm-hmm. And then, and that's when I decided to start training for the half marathon. Okay. So I was like, why? There's no like everything has to be done in extreme. Yeah, there's no in between there's at all. There's no in between. It's like I can't climb five floors. <laughs> I must run twenty two kilometers. Right. So that's what I did. So mm-hmm. I started training for you know I met a friend who's a sports scientist, okay. and told him that hey this is four months away. Mm-hmm. I want to do this. What should I do? And then slowly started you know that kind of kick started all the changes and the habits. Started changing and and this is what what I struggle with because I'd like to stand here and be like, hey, you know, when you start a business, this is what you should do. But I I also know how volatile things are and how fast Correct. they change, and then you have to be adaptive to your environment as well. I guess what I can learn from you is how do you fit in your habits around an entrepreneurial life, right? It's it's completely true because you know you always see the finished product. You never ever see the exactly. actual baking that goes into <laughs> making that little macaron, right? You know, and the baking of it is the easiest part. I always say that I wish my my life was only about making the cake. Yeah, because that's so easy. But it's all the other things that go around it. Correct. That's hard. Well, managing a team, managing getting everybody team. exactly to, right in, in one place. And, 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 and you're in it to make money, right? right. So if you're not making you money, or bits, keep, keep an eye on that. Yeah, yeah. But when this change was taking place, when yeah. uh, Love Fifteen was growing, what are the kinds of habits that grew along with them from a work point of view? I think two, three years ago, two, two years ago, when mm-hmm. I actually, I think I was very, I was a very disorganized person, and I wasn't optimizing my day. I wasn't doing things the right way. And then two years ago, I met. Um, Rinal, who's currently my chief of staff, mm-hmm. who actually I met through Instagram. Oh, really? Yeah, and she's <laughs> she she's she's an engineer. She's twenty four. She's an engineer. She's one of the smartest people I know. Mm. And she she jokes and says, "Oh, I'm an engineer, but at this job, I 
do everything. I engineer everything but computers. <laughs> and um, so she basically came into my life and said, we got to switch everything up. So everything from... I still remember the first week she joined, she would like manage my calendar. Mm-hmm. And at the end of every week, I would get a, a pie chart of how I've spent my time. Brilliant. Yeah, it was crazy. It's like she would analyze every minute of every day of what I've done. Right. So at the end of the week, you look at it and you're like, oh, I spent 60% of my time in meetings. Wow. Was this important? Right. I spent this much time here. Can I change it? And I think only when you realize, when you actually know where that time is going, Mm -hmm. can you decide whether it's smart to allocate it that way. Correct. So I think that's the first step is to actually just be aware of how you're spending your time. She got in time sheeting for you. I think that would be a major contribution. Is that what it's called? Time sheeting? Yeah, it's called time sheeting. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, she totally got time sheeting. She basically turned you into a little consultant. That's (laughs) that's how consultant gets paid. No, it was great, right? Mm -hmm. Because you could actually see where your time is going. And I think that truly helped. And you can choose the meetings you want to be part of. Yeah, and you reduce the time. You you, you decide how you want to allocate your time. You Mm -hmm. say what is more important to you. Mm -hmm. I could be sitting in this one room for half an hour. It gives me no results. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of it? Can Mm -hmm. this be done over an email? Do Mm -hmm. you really need to be there? Mm -hmm. And things like that. And I think those are little changes that Mm -hmm. in your day-to-day work life that Mm -hmm. I think the first thing you really need to do is figure out where that time is going Mm. and then make your habits around it, right? So now I know, now we have a system in which I know that Mondays are always like this, Tuesdays are like that, Wednesdays are like that. So when I have to leave the kitchen and, for example, be here, I know I can do it in midweek. Monday is a time to be in the kitchen, Mm -hmm. you know, split between the teams, everyone gets FaceTime with me. So it's it's all about balancing and knowing that and then you make a pattern out of it so you know that... Every Monday is like that. And then that kind of gives That's me a habit. Of, yeah, it's a habit. Correct. That's great. So that Monday then became a habit. Exactly. Where Mondays are with the team. Yeah. Do you have other days that are all- allotted to particular things? Financial Fridays? <laughs> no, but we do. We do have specific days. So Mondays for the teams, Tuesdays for reports. Okay. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, for example, if I want to go out and, and, you know, do things outside of the kitchen. And the rest of the time, like Friday, Saturday is for kitchen testing, recipe testing. And Sunday, I usually spend at the cafe. Hmm. So I, I kind of have a whole spectrum. Yeah. And yes, do you have, I do not take a day off. That is true. You should not. <laughs> right? Like, there's no such thing as a day off. You I should know. always be thinking about work. <laughs> Somebody once told me that, don't you ever take a day off? Don't you ever chill? And I just realized this, that I actually binged watch TV for the first time in, I don't know, probably two years. Because I was sick. That, uh, like, because of my violence. Like yesterday. Like, like yesterday. <laughs> like, uh, sat- this Saturday, Sunday, I binge watch TV for the first time in God knows what? how long. Listen, I binge watch a lot of TV, so... Yeah, but no, see, the thing is that for me, if I'm at home, it's probably late at night and I'm just about to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'm outside meeting people. So that that yeah, for yeah. me is my way of Downtime. allocating my work. Yeah. yeah. So, what are the kinds of habits that you wanted to incorporate but are finding hard to do now? You know, one thing that I really, it took me a long time to kind of um, get into the habit of doing was to wake up early. Mm -hmm. And um, over the last couple of years, and I think that the, 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 what I've come to realize myself is suddenly from waking up at nine o'clock, if I say from tomorrow, I'm going to wake up at six, it doesn't work, Mm -hmm. right? You slowly make that nine to eight thirty and then you make that to eight. And then finally now I'm at six. So I wake up at six and my day starts at at 6 a.m. And for a couple of years in the middle, like it had become, it was becoming because I was sleeping really late, it was mm. becoming super hard. And once you manage to fix one habit, so mm. if I start waking up at six by nine o'clock, I am dead mm. Mm. and I need to sleep. There's, there's no chance of me staying up and staying out. Correct. So that kind of changes that habit. So I think that um, sleeping times was, was a tough one. Uh, going to bed on time. Going to bed on time also, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think once I started waking up early, then going to bed automatically fixed itself. Because Correct. physically, I was just so tired yeah. that I needed to sleep. One that I'm working on and that's super hard is um, having a fixed lunch time. Okay. That, you know, the habit of eating. Why do you want to have a fixed lunch time? Because the day is so erratic and there's just so much happening mm. that sometimes I just, I don't eat right. And then I'll get so hungry that I will eat whatever is in front of me. And that's when I know that problems for me with food happen when I don't plan right and I know that's an issue Hmm. so yesterday I discussed with my mother and I was like okay I think this is the menu I should plan for the month (laughs) and gave her a list of things that I like eating so you should hand her on slack (laughs) oh she will murder me (laughs) 
But yeah. Hmm. So, so I think food is food is one habit mm-hmm. that I'm trying to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, because of waking up early, exercising is now, you know, th- that's great. I do okay. that first thing in the morning, I get done with it. And it's, I don't, f- like I, if I don't work out now in the morning, I feel like my day is hmm. just completely off. Hmm. So that is a great one. Um, what are the other habits? That you've been trying to put in. Trying to put, so exercising the morning. It could be a work thing as well, like something that you've always wanted to. Like you can't figure out how people manage to do do this at work. I think that the time allocation was a big part, but right. now I think I've become good with that. Hmm. Um, in fact, that was going to be my next question about there are so many forces pulling you in different directions, right? Yeah. Like everybody wants a piece of your time, yeah. I'm sure. And and how good are you at saying no to it, and how I how have, have you become? I have become very good at it, and I think that. What really helps is narrowing down. I think we were discussing this last time I met you. Mm. Is actually picking up, um, you know, a focus for the month. Right. So whether that is, I mean, we obviously have our financial budgets and targets for the month for okay. the company. And then how does that translate to me personally, right? Like what, what of that is, what am I directly, I mean, directly in charge of? Mm. And then every week you cannot focus for more, have th- more than three main focus areas because we're all human and we can't do more than that. I do that with each day as well. So each day I know like if I have to do a million things, I'm not going to get overwhelmed by everything that I need to do on that day because I can't do everything Mm. on one day. So I try to pick three things that I'll focus on for today and just do those and the rest I'll plan for the next day and the next day. So I think it's, it comes down to just understanding what you're working towards Mm. the bigger goal and then breaking that down into smaller chunks. And I think then that makes it easier to say, so you know what you're working towards. So you can say yes or no to different things. Mm. If you don't and you're just shooting in the dark, then you're going to say yes to everything. Yeah, so. It could have been last month's goal or it could be <laughs> the month afterwards. Yeah, exactly, right? it's, exactly. It's not right for now. Exactly. And in fact, what Pooja said is so interesting because there's something that I call the big three, right? Very often we wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to write my to-do list and we just make on long, lamban, seven or 12 things to do. And you never end up doing any of those. Well, and, and some of them are also just like meaningless tasks, right? Mm. That you do a task and you think like, oh, I've achieved, achieved my goal. Achieved something, yeah. Which is... Which is silly. Yeah. Like, you might as well, it, make, it, it has to make a difference yeah. to your day. And that's the important thing. Like if it's not making a difference to your day, it should make you feel like you've won the day. Net, yeah. Net. Yeah. What are your next fitness goals that you're putting in place for, your, for yourself? So the main goal for next year is to climb Mount Fuji. Oh, Nice. All yeah, right. so that is going to happen somewhere in September of next correct. year. Correct. And uh, I mean, I've I've linked it to a business goal, huh. so it's not so it's like a fitness and business goal that comes together. So, if the business does this, this, this to celebrate it, nice. I am going to climb on. Which comes from you know this book that I was reading, which is the Nike story. Right. So it came from there and it's just become like, you know, I have this giant picture of Mount Fuji in my office that I look at every day. So just breaking it down for that, right? You're so I love it. <laughs> have you been? No, I haven't because when I went to Japan, Mount Fuji was under the clouds. Ah, so I couldn't ah, go there. It wasn't, uh, the climbing wasn't allowed. But something I definitely want to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a big, that's a big fitness goal. And mm. then slowly, like I've started doing something called Physique 57. Right. Which I totally, absolutely love. The it's bar workout. The bar workout. It's amazing. Oh my God. Have this, you tried one? I, of course I have. They're <laughs> painful. They're like. Because you look at it and you're like, you know, what is this? Like, I don't know if it's going to be easy. Mm. I don't know what it entails. Correct. And it looks really harmless because you go in there and it's like, yeah, what is this? And then I still remember my first class because I was documenting my first few classes and I still remember like the second class I finished I came out and I'm like what am I doing why am I doing this this is so hard and I've done like I've done boot camp I've done like really hard workouts but I think it's the tiny movements that really it's the get, micro movements yeah, in it it gets you man it gets you and it's like but you feel so good after you finish you have to explain class. what a bar workout is so a bar <laughs> this is going to be fun <laughs> a bar workout is inspired by ballet so you have the you know the bar across the room and uh, it's a 57 minute workout which is why it's called physique 57 and um, essentially you start the workout with a, a small full body warm up and then that goes into then you start working different muscle groups and you work your entire body so you start with your arms you go to your thighs which is the worst your th- you know I've been doing it for three months now and I dread the thigh set because every time you're like every time huh? every day I'm like okay you know and, and, and the instructors who've been there for years they're like mm. the thighs never get easier <laughs> so I'm hoping to have like Beyonce thighs by the end of it mm-hmm. but that's that, that's the plan um, but yeah so you go through different uh, you know muscle groups and the thing is that they're all such 
they're, they're free form. Subtle movements. They're subtle movements. They're free form, yeah. um, and they're so tiny that you really feel the burn. And Correct. and and they state that after every eight classes, you feel a difference. And yeah. when I start, I'm like, yeah, right. In eight mm-hmm. classes, what's going to happen? Correct. And seriously. I take measurements after every eight classes, mm-hmm. and it's incredible to see the change and transformation in your body. Yeah. It's amazing. I normally use the bar exercises for my glutes and leg workouts yeah. as finishers. They're crazy. I remember my first class, which was insane because I was. This was at the space in Juhu, and um, it was me, and I think twelve other fifty to seventy-five year old women. <laughs> And, and they have they this, like this day? big muscular dude standing in the middle <laughs> doing these little ballet movements. Did it was they, hilarious. Did they kick your ass? Totally. <laughs> but when it came to the arm stuff, I kicked their ass back. Ah, okay. <laughs> Fun. Okay, so so the bar is what the bar workouts are. What keeping? What? Yeah. Right. But tell me, I hmm. want to know from you actually hmm. if you do want to start a new habit and hmm. you do want to say incorporate something in your life. Hmm. What is the best? way to, to to tackle it hmm. like would you go all out and just go cold turkey on something would you break it down to smaller goals scientifically what do you think works better so there are two things if you are trying to break a habit hmm. a bad habit that's a different way of approaching it if you Correct. want to put in a good habit that's a different way of approaching it okay let's put in a good habit right if you're putting in a good habit the idea is to make the habit as small as possible to do okay right so if it is to start a bar workout you don't go to the bar class you basically do your little the bar movements. What what is that one called where you go down plie. and plie, right? You start your plie. Sit. You do twenty plies at home. That's it, right? So you get into the habit and mindset of saying, Correct. "I'm a p- kind of person that does this." Got it. Right. Otherwise, It'd putting be on too your, intimidating. it's too intimidating. Putting on your clothes, getting your bag ready, going down into the car, going all the way there. It's too much, right? You have to first get into the mindset of the person that does this. Correct. So making something as small and as probably stupid as this mm-hmm. is what's important. Many people say that how silly to just start by just doing 20 squats. I was like, but 20 squats become, makes you the kind of person that does 20 squats. Correct. Right? I, I couldn't do a push up when I started. Super. So that makes you more likely to go to a class like Correct. that. The same thing starts. Like, for example, if, if somebody wants to start a business, right? A business is a ton of actually small habits that, have, that yeah. you put together every yeah. day. What do you do? Many people say, yeah, I have lots of ideas. And it normally ends at an idea stage. And they never ever execute. Hmm. The point is to start with the smallest way. Correct. Right? Tell five people that you're doing this. Correct. Right. Tell five people you're doing this by a website. So <laughs> all the businesses that I started, Fit will be awesome 180, everything started off by at 12 in the night. I couldn't sleep. I said that this thing is keeping me awake. I have to do something. Hmm. I went to the website, the, the I think what is it, GoDaddy and bought the domain <laughs> names. That's it. It was the start. Got it. Right? So you have to start small, but you have to get that momentum in. Yeah. And I guess that once you start, then you slowly build on to it. What was your first step? For Low 15? Mm. I think the name, yeah, as well. It was to get the name. I think I was actually, I still remember I was on the treadmill and I was thinking of what I want to call my business and I wanted it to feel like Paris and I wanted to feel French. And then, you know, I lived in the 15th hour on the small, so Low 15 came to be. And then I, I actually did call a law, you know, law firm and get the name registered. I called a graphic designer and got the logo made. So actually, six, eight to eight months before I even got my kitchen, correct. I started with just small things. You're right, testing from home, small recipes. And you have to just start. Yeah. The problem is that it just stays in your mind as I will do it because many people are just so scared of starting. Right? Yeah, it's I the fear of that, failure. Exactly, exactly. Right, and you can't fail from something small. <laughs> right, you can fail from something big. <clears throat> it's like falling from like a smaller height. Correct. From like falling from. <laughs> yeah. Now imagine <laughs> if I told you that this is what low fifteen is going to be hmm. when you had started, and hmm. I said that this is what you have to do. It would have been way too intimidating at that point of time to do this. Correct. Right. Yeah. So you have to start off in a tiny, tiny, tiny way, and then build it up. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about bad habits, and if you want to stop doing those, is that you have to make the bad habits as hard as possible to do. Correct. Right? So you have to reverse the order. So you make, an, you make a good habit easy. You make a bad mm-hmm. habit as hard as possible to do. Okay. And uh, so like, I, like if you want to stop drinking, put the keys in, the, in, in, in a cupboard and give the keys to your neighbor or something like that. Right? <laughs> as, as hard as... And I keep no telling people, access to the bar, please. That would be so hard. Life would be so depressing. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> There's a bottle of wine waiting for you. Yes. <laughs> 
But like Mount Fuji, I like that as a goal. Yeah, so that's a big goal. And, and I think that what it does is puts things in perspective, right? Yeah. And I think that because it's also tied to a business goal, you know for the next one year that if whatever you're doing doesn't take you to either two, mm. whether it doesn't make you fit enough to climb it or mm. doesn't make you reach your business goal, you just mm. have to say no. Mm. So just, you know, your decisions are made for you. Mm. But tell me something, were you always somebody who was action-oriented or is it something that you learned? I think I always was, but mm. not to the extent that I am currently. Okay. So I think that has been built over time. Mm-hmm. And it's taken a lot of work. And okay. It's taken a lot of, I think, um, culinary school definitely helped in discipline. Mm-hmm. And, and, and hospitality school helped. But I think that it's it's something that I build over time. And especially... In the kitchen, I always had it, but the way I work now, even from an admin perspective, has come in in the last two years. Mm. And I see such a difference. Was it someone that helped you um, get it in? Was it a um, mentor that helped you with it? I do. I, in fact, I, I, yeah, I do have one mentor who helps me with a lot of things. And then the team just mm. like, you know, it's like hire really smart people. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What are the kinds of things that have been troubling um, that, that, that you'd always wanted to incorporate I, in your life? I think what's what's really challenging is as, uh, you know, as a business owner and as an entrepreneur is that you'll be faced with challenges. Now, there, there's never a time when there's no stress, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The levels of stress vary and in how intensive mm-hmm. they are and how they would impact the business change. But there's always something happening. I mm-hmm. think the last couple of months I've been under a lot of stress mm-hmm. and a lot of like days that have been super dark, mm-hmm. right? Like it's it's almost like then how do you kind of, what can you do to snap out of it or what do you do to get out or make, make yourself kind of see the light when you don't feel like there's any light at the end of the tunnel. Correct. Right. So those are things. So I think what I started doing was obviously as cliched as it sounds is meditation mm-hmm. and um, gratitude. Gratitude and breathing. Breathing, no? So yeah, critical. yeah. This, you know, so I, I was... Do you have a favorite breathing modality? A box technique I just learned recently and I'm like... Was it from the Habit Coach podcast? <laughs> that was, I think, like our first was few it? episodes. Yeah. yeah. The box breath is so powerful. Yeah, it is. And it's it's an insane how, how you know, it just changes. And I think it, what, it, what it does mm. is brings you to the moment yeah. so you're, you're current you're living in the present because hmm. otherwise you know when, when you start worrying and you start thinking about issues and stress you go into different tangents and your brain just starts working on different permutations and combinations saying what if this goes wrong and then that'll go wrong and that'll go wrong Correct. I think what breathing does is just kind of centers you and brings you back to the moment and tells you that you're here this is the moment that you have everything is great in this moment and it'll be fine it's present there's this thing called monk school, apparently. I was listening to a podcast where they were discussing this. And they said the first thing that they teach you in monk school is how to breathe. Yeah. Right? Isn't that crazy? We've forgotten how to breathe. Nobody yeah. teaches us how to breathe. Right? In fact, we should link the episodes where we did the <laughs> podcast, uh, the, the box breath yeah. on this yeah. podcast. Yeah. So the box breath is definitely one of them. What else can you teach me? So I'll tell you about this really nice. In fact, I'm going to do a podcast on this. It's called the, have you heard of Frank Sinatra? Yeah, right? Of course. Right? So you know his song that goes dooby dooby doo. Yes. Right? So that's his line, right? Yeah. Dooby. So if you break it down, it's do, then be, then do, be, and do. Right? So if you break it down your life into doing, yeah, not dooby. <laughs> if you break down your life into doing yeah. and being, and then doing and being. So right? it's the rest. So you get your you get you connected again with the world around you. Otherwise, it's be be. Otherwise, it's do 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 constantly. Correct. And uh, and, and it's so powerful as a thought because, like, I remember us discussing this. There's no such thing as balance. Right? <laughs> you either uh, the question I hate the most hmm. is work like life work life balance doesn't exist. I, I mean, I don't know what to say because this is life. This is life. Yeah. And if you don't enjoy it, it's like then you're not enjoying your life. Exactly. So so you better start liking the work that you do. right? And because there's no balance, you have to be teeter-tottering at the extreme. So there is doing, 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 and then there is chilling. There's being. There's hugging a tree. There's looking out of the window. <laughs> and then there's doing, 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 doing. And then yeah. there's that. Right? So in fact, the meditation that we do or the breaks that we take in between our work, yeah. right? Like the, the stuff that you've done in yeah. your office yeah. right it's so important <laughs> yeah tell them about that so i just des- <laughs> i decided because i spend so much time 
at work, um, the best thing I've ever done is to put a bed in my office and not a shower because if I did, I would just move into work. So I do have a bed at work. And I think at a, a, every day around 3 o'clock, 3, 3.30, I'll just take 20 minutes just for myself. I lock the office and I'll just meditate. Yeah. And I think to me that kind of just centers me and brings me back because I start my day at six. Mm. And I think by three, it's already you've interacted with so many people. You've done so much. You know, the stress starts to build up. I think that midday sort of break and meditation just kind of centers you. And then you can finish the rest of your day and then go ahead. With Correct. And, and the second half of your day is productive again. Yeah, it's productive again for a while and then after that you go and then you, you know Go to sleep Go, go to sleep <laughs> Watch Trevor Noah first guys always and then go to sleep Oh, Trevor Noah <laughs> Yeah, that's so another he habit He listens to this podcast Isn't that why you wanted to come on? Does he? Of course he does He writes in all the time <laughs> <laughs> Can I propose that? <laughs> Please Guys, Pooja is getting down on me. <laughs> Thank you, Pooja, so much for coming in and chatting with us. It's been hilarious. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Ashtin Doc on Twitter and Instagram. Do you wish you were smarter? Well, so do we. But the next best thing? We could make you sound smarter. And to help you with this endeavor, we are Simplified. Ooh. A podcast uh, that attempts to break down the complex world around you with a uh, little knowledge, a lot of poor jokes and a ton of random trivia. Episodes out every Monday. On the IVM podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. See, See ya! ya. Filter coffee is a fascinating beverage. You need to pick the right beans, blend them in the right proportion, roast them to perfection, and slow brew at the right temperature to get the perfect cup. Which is exactly like great conversations as well. You need to track down the most interesting minds, get them into their zone, and settle down for an unhurried, unscripted chat. And coffee for me is always, always, always best enjoyed with friends. I'm Karthik Nagarajan, and do share my table as I meet some of the most interesting people I know and sit them down for a strong cup of coffee and an even stronger conversation. Join me every Wednesday for a freshly brewed episode. This is not Frappe. This is the Filter Coffee Podcast. <laughs>